Greetings, I am Eric Basir, and this is a narration of a screen movie capture of a photo that I was sent by a curious genealogist. He has a picture here that I believe is a scan of a photo that was printed from a scan. Um, the giveaway for me is some of the artifacts going on. Uh, I suspect this was an HP printer. I, uh, sorry, scanner. Could be wrong. Uh, I did not confirm it with him. A lot of times HP will introduce uh, uh, sharpening in artifacts, uh, gummy edges through sharpening and JPEG compression even if it's saved as a TIFF. I don't know why they do this. I think uh, they've been doing this for many years. They need to change that. But uh, nevertheless, that's why Epson is my recommendation when it comes to scanning photos. HP is really good though. Productivity hardware for your office. So what you're seeing here is my analysis Originally, I narrated this, and the audio did not work, and uh, so it didn't record the audio, so I am re-recording the audio. So I take you through duplicating the background layer, which is a standard operating procedure, and we have, uh, when we do that, it just allows us to make changes or accidental changes and not have to completely start over again. The customer or uh, the gentleman is wondering, what do I do with this big white blown out area? It almost looks like there was a light flare and the negative uh, got a little flare of light. And that's why it's the neg and then the negative ended up being more dense. And when it was printed, of course, because the negative is dense, uh, you have a lighter area. So... There's some brute force methods that we can go about doing this. And so I open an adjustment layer from the adjustment uh, from the layer palette there in Elements. And this is Photoshop Elements. And I move the midtone or the middle slider over to see how f how much detail is still in, uh, still, you know, it, uh, how much detail we can resurrect. And uh, because this is a copy of a copy, there's never going to be very much but sometimes there's something and with that we can work with it and come up with a slightly slight improvement so here I have the layer mask selected uh, chosen in the layers palette and what I need to do is paint out using the paintbrush tool paint out the actually paint in uh, the area that it it's uh, worked on and as you see I'm using the brush showing how light it is around there but in this case it's better just to select the whole thing and make sure you uh, switch your um, background or foreground colors and I, sh I should be uh, going down there to do that there we go and I'm switching to black and white from white to black and then I hit delete and it covers up the changes that we made with that levels adjustment. Now we can erase or paint into that mask with white uh, using a brush. We'll have to adjust the, uh, as you can see, the edges are very harsh. And as you see, there we have detail. Although now we have a weird color cast and some of the edges are too hard. Using the options that are available with the paintbrush tool, I can start working with that. Now, of course, when you darken an area, especially for a color scan, you will make other colors more dense. So I will show you in a moment here how to desaturate and get rid of all the color so that you can get a more accurate uh, uh, correction. And I go into the layer palette 
and I have to choose something called hue and saturation. And there I go. And then all I do is drag that slider all the way to minus 100%. Now we got rid of the color cast. Now we can go in in that mask for levels. And if you notice, I didn't, I caught myself there. I was actually working in the hue and saturation layer. So you got to make sure you click on the right layer. I switch my uh, foreground colors. Just swapping them one for the other. And then I use my paintbrush. Adjust the opacity. It doesn't need to be so strong. And of course we have a softer edge brush. And then I go paint in there. So you paint in, paint out, paint in, paint out until you get it to match. You know, so that's that's a decent improvement. And watch out for shadow areas. You definitely don't want those areas to be affected. You want them to look normal. You don't want them to be all blocked up. Yeah, definitely don't want that. And I turn that layer off and on to show you before and after. And make some more uh, uh, adjustments. And what I'm going to do next is kind of rebuild. Show you that's another option. Now, some of the area is really blown out. And it's not as important as the area that's directly above their heads. So I make a new blank layer from the layer palette and drag it all the way to the top. By doing that, we have uh, an, a, a little area we can paint. And this is where we do it manually. So we're going to get a paintbrush, and we'll use the Alt Option key to sample the colors that we want to use. And we want to make sure we have a good, good uh, brush, kind of hard edge, 100% opacity. We want to select the color that's closer to what we want it to be. You might have to undo it a couple times, but you know, just paint it in. If you hold down the shift key and click, you'll get straighter lines. So you see me here painting in and this is um, you know just a uh, a rebuild basically so after the panels then I have to do the uh, darker parts underneath the panel it's a little too thick there so I use the bracket keys to quickly shrink the size of my brush a bit and I do a lot of shift click right here to build that up And I kind of show you right here when you shift click how, how you can get the nice straight lines. Of course I undid that. I was showing you before and after. And then when you zoom out, I'll show you the uh, before and after again. It's an improvement. You know, looking hindsight, I might even add some noise to match that through uh, filter noise. But uh, this is all done in Photoshop Elements, so you don't need to get on the cloud and pay Adobe 20 bucks or whatever a month to use their software. You can just use this, or you can get some other program. So... Basically here I'm, I'm, I'm going to kind of darken part, give it some kind of fall off to, to match the rest of the, the house because uh, lighting isn't the same all across the side of the house. We basically want to darken it 
get a very large brush with a very low opacity. And we, we got that selection going by just control clicking or command clicking that new layer, that layer one. By doing that, it just gave us little marching ants. It's a little too dark, so bring it down even more. Right, there you go. It might still be too much. But at least you get a good idea of what's possible. And that's all I'm trying to do. I'm trying to let you know, yeah, there's ways to do it. And there's more ways, and I'm sure there's people who have more uh, or even better ways to do it. But if I had to uh, make that whole house again, that's what I would do. But definitely all the details gone. And uh, that about wrap it up. Make sure you follow us online at photographics.pro. And buy my tutorials and videos. Get my course. Have fun with your photo restoration. Bye-bye.